Hi everyone. So in this little video, little hints and tips video, I just want to demonstrate to you some of the materials and techniques that I use when I need to erase something on pastel mat. Now, unless I'm working on a sheet of pastel mat, and let me just demonstrate for you with a crude little drawing of a um, dog's head here. So here's my sort of doggy shape. Um, <laughs> very crude little doggy drawing. So unless I'm drawing something like this head portrait and um, with this dog's head, unless I get some bits of pigment or dust or dirt falling into this outside area that's outside of the outside edge line of the dog itself and I'm wanting to keep that background the same color as the pastel mat I'm using so for example in this one it's on white pastel mat so the only time I would actually bother to erase would be if I spilt something um, onto the outside area anything inside the lines um, the joy of using pastel mat is the fact that I can just go in and correct any mistakes. So if I go too light on one layer, I can go in with dark. And if I go in too dark or make a slight error with my alignment, I can just correct it on the next layer. So that is, like I say, one of the advantages uh, that we embrace when you're working on pastel mat is the amount of layers we can use and the fact that we can keep correcting with the next layer. But say you've got an area of pastel mats up here, I can get 40 or 50 layers. And then down here, I can only get a handful. Then I may need to be a little bit more selective in that area um, by using either a workable fixative or I could lift off some pigment. So I have various tools I use for lifting off pigments. A lot of you will have heard of Scotch Magic, Magic Tape. It's a see-through low tack tape, and a lot of us artists do use it for lifting off pigment. So you can use it to lift off pigment that's not wanted in an area, but also you can use it um, as part of your drawing techniques for lifting off specific shapes, for creating fur texture, um, creating grass, you can put um, so sample. I've done a white curly fur video where I've used the tape to lift off and create white highlights on white paper. But you could put down something like layers of green, lift off some shapes and create some grass effects, put some more greens down, create more grass effects by lifting off more different shapes. It's really, really clever way of creating textures and shapes. As an alternative to using uh, the Scotch Magic Tape, I often use my favoured brown framing tape. I use it for erasing, I use it for fixing down my pictures, and of course for framing, um, sealing the backs of my pieces. But here, like you can see, I can just lay it down. Over the top here, um, I'm just laying it down on some of these marks, and it will lift off that pigment really easily without putting any pressure on the paper. So if you just want to lift off a little bit of pigment in an area where you've just made it a bit dirty, just lay the tape down and lift away. You can do that with the brown framers tape or the um, Scotch Magic tape. So there's some other tools that I use before we get going. This is the mono eraser. This is the rectangular end one. I've also got a round one. Um, so you can see here it's got the rectangular 2.5 mil tip. I mainly use this one though for working on drafting film. Um, anyone who's been on my workshops knows that I never put um, erasers on the materials list and I have been known to confiscate them um, at these events. I will explain why I do that now. So there's a little bit of theory now about the tooth of your paper, any paper, but especially pastel mat and textured surfaces. 
I always explain it as, this is a crude version by the way, um, so this is your paper, you've got mountains and you've got valleys. So when you're putting pigment down onto your paper, you use a lovely constant even pressure to do this. So you go in with a really, really light pressure so that you don't crush those mountains because those mountains are what gives you the tooth and the longer you can preserve that tooth by using that lovely consistent low pressure, the more tooth you're going to have um, later on in your piece to be able to create more and more layers. So when you start to add your pencil pigments, the whole aim is to start to fill the tooth with each layer. So each light layer that you put down, a tiny bit of pigment will start to fall into those valleys. The amount of layers you're allowed to put in allows you to mix those tonal values or your colors. And again, pastel mat textured papers allows you so many of these layers if you treat the paper with respect. So here you can see, this is kind of how your pigment would fill those valleys, fill the tooth. So if you imagine going in with that hard eraser, that mono eraser, and you start to press really hard to erase the top of um, those lines, you're gonna start to crush some of those mountains, which in turn, is going to give you the ability to not put down as many layers as if you treated that paper with respect and lifted off that unwanted pigment gently. Plus, like the mono eraser or hard eraser could be pushing that pigment further down into those valleys. So back up to our dog up here. If you're not bothered about losing the tooth in that outside area around the outside edge of that dog, that's fine. Use your hard eraser rub hard, remove the pigment that you don't want because you don't need to preserve the tooth there because you're not going in there with any other pencil. Um, so it doesn't matter if you damage it there. But again, you can lift off there using um, tape if you want, but that is where the only place I would use a hard eraser. I'm also known to use a putty eraser here is a blue putty eraser and I've got a white one here too. There is a secret with using these and that is to really, really warm them up. So work them in your hands, press them hard, give them a good work and they'll soften up and become really pliable. And don't worry if they start to get dirty. I know artists that have been using the same eraser for about 20 years um, and they look dirty but they still work, they're fine. So you can use it literally, all you do um, in a big area, just go in and press and press and press and lift off. And you know, I'm not pressing very hard here, just gently pressing down and with each little press and lift away, it's lifting off a little bit more pigment. But once you've got it warmed up and pliable, you can start to shape the ends into a point or any shape uh, so, especially for something like fur, you can start to really lift out a shape or an area. You can even get it fine enough to start lifting off where you want to put some whiskers. So here, I'm just starting to lift off very gently, again, very gently technique. All I'm doing is touching it down um, so I can feel the eraser touching that paper and it starts to lift off the pigment. But to be fair, this is not my favoured method, but it does do the trick. So my favoured method is my tape, and I tend to use it with these styluses. As you can see here, one's got a thin end, one's got a fattish end. So let me show you what I was talking about earlier on with regards to this magic tape. So for example, over here, we've got our little marks. If you've got particular tiny little marks that you want to lift off, let me just zoom in a little bit here. So I wanna just come in here and start to lift off some of these little dots. All I do is 
put it into place. I don't even press it into place. I just lay it over the top, get my little stylus, and gently just be really precise because I can see through the tape. And I can just lift off those specific marks and lift away. And there you can see the pigment that's lifted off on the first pass. And then you just go in, lay the tape down again, and repeat the process. Um, again, I'm not pressing very hard at all. And it's gradually starting to lift that pigment off. Now the same over here. This area over here has got, I don't know, three or four layers of pigment down. So again, I'm just laying that pigment down. So if I want to lift off a bigger area, I might come in, if I've got a fingernail, I'm just using my fingernail, or I could just use my finger, or you could use, like, you know, the end of um, a paintbrush or something like that, just a big shape. And there you can see I can lift off a whole sway, the whole area of pigment if I want to. So let's go in over the top of that area once more. Again, just rubbing gently. And this time, you'll see even more pigment come off. And you there you can see the difference there. So you just go in there a couple more times, and that will lift off pretty much all of that pigment down and without damaging that tooth. And of course, remember the brown tape. Just to show here, you can just lay that down exactly the same as using the magic tape. A little rub and lift away. I wouldn't advise using masking tape. That's the only tape I probably wouldn't use because it can be known to pull the backing off the pastel mat. And there you can see that time, that's three lifts and that is lifted away a lot of that pigment there. Okay, so now I want to go in with um, this area here that's got loads and loads of layers of pencil down. So again, I'm just going to drop this magic tape over the area. I've picked up my stylus um, with one of the slightly thicker ends compared, the, compared to the pink stylus. So here, I'm going in quite gentle but firm. I'm just pressing the stylus in and lift away. And you can instantly see that I've lifted away and created um, some texture lines in there. But also, they could be whiskers, they could be part of the fur shapes. So I'm going to come in here again, just repeat that. And the benefit of being able to see through the tape is just fantastic as well. And lift away. And you can see the amount of pigment that's lifted away on that tape there as well. It's just really effective. So just to show that the brown tape does work as well. And there you go, lift away and just repeat that process. And lift away. So there you can see just how much pigment has come away there. Um, so you're not rubbing the pigment into the grooves, into the valleys. You're not damaging the tops of those mountains. You're not ruining the tooth. You're simply being really precise as well. So I'm just going to show you this as well. What I've done at the bottom of the sheet here is people keep os asking about, can you use the same technique on pan pastel? So I've just rubbed a um, couple of layers of pan pastel here, laying the tape down over the top using the magic tape. We'll just do exactly the same thing, but there is a difference with the pan pastel. Um, it's a lot softer, much more fine powdery, so it fills that those valleys a lot more. So it's going to take a bit more effort to lift away. So here's the first lot that I've lifted off. Let's lift it, sorry, lay the tape down over again. And let's go in for round two. So I'm coming in over that same area with the stylus. 
So if you wanted to use a really fine stylus, that's where you could go in and create whiskers. So look at that. There's proof there that this does work using Pampa styles. Um, and again, this will be a really, really good way of creating the highlights on curls, um, as well as the whiskers around the muzzle. Um, fab. So I can't wait to actually use this a little bit more on some of our Pampa style pieces. So this one here is um, one of the guards that you see people using online. They're more for drawing specific shapes, but you can use these for like a little safety measure. Um, so what you do is you pop your tape down and you can lift off specific shapes. So if you need a straight line lifting off or a repeat of a curve that is exactly the same as the, the previous curve, you can just come in and use your stylus into the one of the lines on this guide. So here I'm just going to do some straight lines. And then I'll do some little rounded ones that you could, it's almost like creating fish scales you could do. You could create any sort of shapes. So it's just a nice little tool to have and they're very cheap to buy online. So here you can see, I'm just using the little curves here and you can sort of create like a little fish scale effect. Um, but any little stencil will work. So being able to lift away your pigment is just as important as learning and understanding how to add your pigment. And it's finding that balance of um, knowing which techniques to use. So when to add pigment and when to take away to create deck textures. And you can just make your piece that a little bit different to anybody else's by not relying totally on building pencil layers, but also using the fact that you can lift away. So I'm just showing this one last time here on the um, Pampa style area. Let's just do these little rounded shapes as well, as well. And then we'll use show you again up on the thick area of pencil pigment above, just as a comparison. I think it's just so easy to go in with an eraser. It's a bit like people use blending tools. You can just blend with your pencils. Um, so same as, look how many, much pigment there came away on that tape then. So I'm going to come back up now to um, where I've got that lots of layers of pigment. I'm, in fact, I'm going to put even more down. Um, so then I can um, demonstrate that same method up there. As I've just shown you on the Pampa style area as well. So where you've lifted away here, if you needed to get a different colour into those lines, this is a great way of doing it. So let me just grab a yellow here, which will really show up against it. And again, you'd sharpen your pencil up a little bit more than I've got here. But, but if you were worried about getting your whites in, they weren't going in well over the top of your darks. This is where you can lift away some of that texture using your tape and then going in with your sharp pencil to get, get those little lines of colour in. And of course you do have um, another little trick up your sleeve which I'll show you right at the end. Some of you will probably know what that is I'm going to bring in. but I'll save that one right for the last part of the demonstration. Let me just zoom in here so you can see nice and close all of the pigment that's down. Let's lay that tape down. I'm not pressing it into place. Got the finest end here. And I'm just going to mark in a few little lines. I press quite hard there with the um with the um stylus this time. And again, just showing you can lift off a chunk of area as well. And you just keep repeating. Sometimes you might just want to lift off the last couple of layers. Other times you might want to take it all the way back down to the virgin paper, which is what I've been doing in these demos. But you can see just how much pigment comes off with every single time you do this. And you're not lifting off the pigment around it either. That's what people worry about. They think, oh, um, it's going to lift off all the other pigment as well. No, it's only going to lift off where you tell it to. 
So try not to worry. And again, if you are a bit worried, just try this on a little, little spare piece of paper like I am here, just so you get the feel of it. And there you go with the brown tape. I've just laid that down over the top there just to show again how easily you can just use it to lift off chunks of pigment in a whole area. A couple more goes and you'd lift all of that pigment off. So that is pretty much the ways that I use, um, I erase, and the reasons why I don't use a traditional hard eraser. But of course, the last tool you can use is your sliced ceramic blade. So if all else fails and you've got too much pigment down um, or you haven't got any tape, just come in with that ceramic blade and just lift away. And you can take that down to two or three layers or right back down to that base paper. You can take away whole sections of pigment or really precise tiny little lines and then of course you can come back in then with a sharp pencil and get those bright colours or those bright white back in where you need it. I'm just going to try this down on the pan pastel. It's not going to work as well on here because of that really powdery edge remember but it can work. So a combination of using the knife um, blade with your tape down on this um, pastel. I think that will give you the best results there. And let me just show you that. Let me just put a piece of tape. There you go. A little bit of tape using the stylus as well. And you rotate between using that and the knife. We'll give you, there you go. Let me just zoom in so you can just see that a little bit better. There you go. So I hope that's helped to explain what I use and why. And like I said earlier, I think it's just as important to know how to lift off pigment as part of your creati creative techniques um, is just as important as knowing how to put pigment down. Um, so I hoped it helped. And here again, just those tools. I've got the Scotch Magic Tape, um, Brown Framers Tape, and of course, here's your styluses and your ceramic blade. All really good weapons to have in your armory when working on textured papers like pastel mat and UART. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please take a second just down here in the corner, just hit the button. It really helps my channel. So thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you all again soon.